So I see uh, some familiar faces uh, yesterday attending my talk. So uh, just uh, for sustainability, some of this slide will also be recycled. So 51% of CEO actually now rank sustainability as their greatest organizational challenge. So why is sustainability important for business and manufacturing? It is because manufacturing contributes to 22% of our economy and we are the fourth largest exporter of high-tech product globally and also the top 10 in chemical products export. And also the energy and uh, industry sector account for more than 80% of our greenhouse gas. And then with increasing carbon tax, you also mean that there will increase financial impact on our industry. Therefore, it's important for, to ensure that the future of manufacturing is sustainable. Uh, it means that we have to focus on two things, manufacturing for sustainability as well as sustainable manufacturing. I'll elaborate on that. So what does that mean in establishing standards? We have to develop standards on sustainability for key business sector. And this is to facilitate inspection, testing, and also certification for compliance. So manufacturing for sustainability is about design for sustainability to reduce the carbon footprint. So product must be designed for, to be durable, for reuse, refurbishment, and uh, ease of recycling, uh, especially in the new products and material. And where product cannot be recycled or have reached the end of recyclable uh, life, then we must have cost-efficient thermal treatment to reduce the volume of waste and to generate energy for incineration. Then we can use the incineration bottom ash uh, to capture CO2 and then to also produce alternative sand. And in doing so, we then close the whole resource loop. Adopting green processes that use less ingredient, uh, use fewer ingredients, and also greener ingredient. And for example, instead of using toxic solvent, we can, can we consider using water instead? Uh, we actually help a local company to develop a skincare product that uses less ingredient, fewer ingredient, and they replace alkanol with water. And uh, we were told that now it's the best-selling skincare product for eczema. We also design green and sustainable product that can be easily recycled. And if for any reason that it cannot be retrieved, for example, your shampoo, then you want to make sure that it's designed to be biodegradable. You can also read about the indoor waterfall at our Changi Airport, uh, the jewel, being the centerpiece and a symbol of sustainability. How the water is uh, effectively recycled and the mist is uh, dispersed effectively to actually maintain the humidity for the tropical plant. You also need energy for manufacturing and therefore to reduce the carbon footprint, first we need to use green energy and also to use less energy by increasing energy efficiency. I show the Marina Bay Sands uh, because it is the largest single green mark building in Singapore to be certified. So among other, any, uh, among a lot of other green initiatives that they have uh, implemented, it has a 536 solar panel lining the rooftop, uh, the roof of the sand sky park, and it covers about 880 meters square meter of uh, the roof. And because of this, they managed to reduce the carbon emission by 70 tons a year. And this is quite significant. Singapore, you know, there is an alternative energy disadvantage. We have limited renewable. No hydro, no wind, no geothermal, no tidal energy. 
even although solar is promising uh, in Singapore, I mean, it's one of the promising renewable in Singapore, but we have lots of cloud, cloud cover and our average peak sun hour is only four hours a day. So this is actually uh, not very uh, promising too. Some examples of where standards and guidelines are useful. In food processing, for example, we may need to know what is the end-to-end -end carbon footprint. Uh, for example, in the case of chicken imports, 40% of the carbon footprint actually comes from processing, 15 land use and only 4% for transport. So there was actually a study comparing uh, the carbon footprint of chicken uh, from Brazil versus uh, from Malaysia. Uh, so you think which one has a higher carbon footprint? So actually the carbon footprint uh, from uh, chicken import from Brazil is 15% lower compared to, uh, to Malaysia. Mm. But this is for frozen chicken. Uh. If you want fresh chicken, no choice. Yesterday we were at the, the other forum, they say no choice, they will still want fresh chicken. So still buy from Malaysia. And for cleaner energy, we're actually looking at green hydrogen as one of the potential energy carrier and also ammonia as a possible hydrogen carrier. So it means that we have to also establish standards for storage and transportation of hydrogen and ammonia. But because Singapore is land constrained, uh, we may not be able to adopt international standard for ammonia and hydrogen uh, safety zone. Uh, therefore, I think it's important for us to even do research, conduct modern and simulation analysis to develop safety standard that is actually relevant to Singapore. And we may also have to develop new materials for hydrogen pipings. Incineration bottom ash and, re and a recycled concrete uh, aggregate can also be recycled for building materials. And better still, if I can close the carbon loop by capturing CO2 from the air and combine with the incineration bottom ash and recycled uh, concrete aggregate to make sand. The carbonate from the, the, the catalyst can then encapsulate the heavy metal and then this will prevent a heavy metal leaching. So we have to also determine how can we set standard to test carbon abatement and also the extent of uh, heavy metal leaching. And as we move away from internal combustion engine ICE, to electric vehicle EV. And we also need to know how we can measure the carbon abatement to establish if EV is cleaner than ICE. Because if we consider the end-to-end -end, uh, production, uh, the carbon footprint for production to retirement, the carbon footprint involved in the manufacturing of EV is actually much higher than ICE uh, because of the battery production. Uh, lots of uh, carbon footprint comes from there. So there was a study also that showed that EV will only break even, will only break even with ICE only after 30,000 km. So which is about two years uh, for typical driving in Singapore. So also to facilitate green financing, we also need to have a way of verifying carbon abatement. So verification of carbon abatement is important for a company because you can demonstrate to your stakeholder that your carbon footprint and the greenhouse, uh, the greenhouse, uh, the green gas uh, emission reduction, they are actually real, quantifiable, credible, and auditable. So we need to have credible carbon calculator and also life cycle assessment tool to be able to compute the end-to-end -end carbon footprint. And you know, consumers now are demanding for greener products and also are willing to pay a premium for greener products. Recent surveys show that 85% of the consumers have actually become greener in their purchasing. And therefore, we must see sustainability as an integral part of your company business strategy or else you'll be left behind. So with sustainability as an integral part of a business strategy, 
uh, it will actually increase your product branding so that you can become uh, competitive. You have the competitive advantage. And you can meet consumer uh, demand if you can align with the changing demand that consumer now they are willing to pay for uh, pay more for sustainable sustainable product. And you also be able to attract talent because it was also surveyed that nearly 40% of the millennia they have taken job because of a company's sustainability. And they have even taken pay card to work in an environmental friendly uh, company. So this is one of the surveys that is recently done. And there will also be ample new opportunity as you venture into business in area on sustainability. So how do, you, how do company know if they are sustainable? This is where sustainable standard can be used as a guideline and as a benchmark. And thank you for that.